So Eric got back into town and uh, we came up with some add-ons for the project. I just uh, bought a bunch of plywood that I'm gonna lay down today. When he looks up at the ceiling, he wants to see wood instead of the underside of the uh, steel roofing. It's a bit more expensive to do it this way, but it's gonna be a better, stronger roof and Eric doesn't mind spending the money. I staggered the seam of the lower course of sheathing to tie the roof together nicely, and these sheets hung off the edges. I just trimmed everything to size after it was nailed in place. It was easier to see where I wanted to cut the plywood to by referencing the fascia corner from below and I realized I could shoot a nail through that mark and see it from above. I basically got the uh, the roof done. I would keep going, but for a change, I've actually got plans. Just gonna knock off right about now. I switched gears the next day and installed the walls. The change of roofing materials brought up some questions that I needed to ask the guys at the roofing store, and it was Sunday. It was looking like I might need an air gap and or radiant insulation barrier between the plywood and metal roofing because condensation can build up between those layers and lead to mold. This Tyvek is a moisture barrier that prevents water from entering the wall cavity from outside but allows it to escape, kind of like a Gore-Tex jacket. Oh, and by the way, Eric wants to leave the front of the tea house open until winter, so for now, I'm only enclosing three walls. One more check to see if my walls are plumb, and it's time for T111. I didn't get much good footage of installing these, but T111 is sheathing and siding in one. The seams are disguised by these kerf cuts that make the plywood panels look like a bunch of 8 inch boards. At corners and seams you nail on the face, and in between, the kerfs line up with standard stud spacing so you can nail in those valleys. The guys at the roofing supply store uh, told me which underlayment would be good to use. I'm gonna go with their, their judgment on that. They also suggested I trim the plywood flush, so I did that next. I've got the blade depth set just deep enough to cut through the sheathing. So I couldn't find much in the way of instructions. There's a uh, sticky back that peels off along the center and uh, these guys on this YouTube video I watched uh, they made it look pretty easy you just kind of pull it off one side pull it off the other kind of like one of those um, uh, label maker labels you know anyway we'll see how it goes Over here. I've got a wrinkle over here. I think it's okay. I 
think it's all right. I've got a little crease right here, but you know, it's to be expected, you know, to have a little bit of an imperfection the first time you, uh, you use a new product. So anyways, it says if you can't get a roller up on the roof to uh, just really walk all over it a whole bunch. Much better. This was the most uh, iffy part of the, the whole process so far, so I'm glad it's done. I'm actually on my way right now to go uh, do some work at the tea house. Just came across this old building that's being demolished. Um, a lot of these old buildings don't seem to have headers in them. Uh, this one does over that window there, but uh, you know, over this opening. Got a little header, I guess. This window over here, they just uh, <clears throat> ran a board flat. So I guess my building should be strong enough if this place has been around for 100 years. It is so nice out. I'm just biking over to Lizzie and Eric's to, uh, to put on some roofing. With roofing, everything uphill laps down over the material below it in the same manner that shingles each lap over the one below. So the proper way to put your flashing down is to put your uh, bottom eave flashing underneath your tar paper or whatever underlayment you have uh, so that the edge here doesn't catch water. Then you put down your tar paper, then you put down uh, the, uh, the gable flashing here and let the next piece above it lap over top of that. Then after you have done both sides, then you go ahead and put the top flashing piece on. That's what I'm gonna do right now. And there's the top. You want to start your panels on the side away from the predominant winds. I kind of have a feel from over the time that I've spent here that the predominant wind is kind of coming in this way a little bit towards the house. So I am going to start the panels on the side towards the house so that the, the overlapping flap is, uh, is on this side actually, so that it gets smoothed down like cat hair pet, you know, the, the right way instead of ruffled up like when you pet a cat from back to front. And uh, that, that'll make the, the roof panels last longer. They won't get lifted by the wind. So I've got a spacer block here. I'm gonna use this to gauge how, uh, how much of an overhang to leave at the top. This type of roofing calls for a self-tapping screw with an integrated neoprene gasket. So I'm using my, uh, my drill instead of my impact driver because it's got a clutch on it. Uh, you can vary the clutch by turning, uh, turning this bezel here. And uh, I set it kind of low so that when, it, uh, uh, when the screw goes in, it doesn't go in too far. You want it to squish down just slightly so that the gasket is, 
is secure on there. You don't want to squeeze it down so much that it poofs out too much. That will actually cause leaking. I think that's about right. I've done some of these overlaps improperly. I'm gonna need to flip this, flip this side up and put this side under and put it back down. I guess uh, you learn things along the way. When I fixed that the next day, I realized I also forgot to install the foam closure strips that block the openings at the end of the panels and prevent insects from making a home below the ridges. We've pretty much got a roof here. I read somewhere that you can uh, just score the metal and bend it back and forth across that and you can get a good cut that way. So it seems easier for me to, to cut a straight line with this knife uh, than it does with uh, these shears. Because, uh, you know, they work pretty well, but if I run this blade along a straight edge, uh, it seems like I'll get a much more uh, reliable result. So. Well, that works. That works. I'm gonna put some more screws down the edge Okay, I'm gonna keep bending down the line. I cut a little bit with the shears, but the edge was pretty jagged, and I went back to scoring and snapping, adding in a relief cut to shorten the section I was bending to a foot or two. Yeah, making these little relief cuts and uh, bending short lengths of it back and forth seems to work pretty well and I'm getting a pretty straight line compared to uh, what I was getting with the, uh, the shears. Yeah, look how smooth that is. So the roof is basically done. I just gotta come up here tomorrow or something and uh, put in some more screws, but uh, it's looking good. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe for more.